here we have the payroll tax setup and compliance screen where you'll enter your business details, like your company name. And there's also a place for your business address. As you'll see, there will be an address that populates here. It will pull from um, any address that you have entered initially. So when you initially set up your company and your employees, you will have a business address listed, and it tends to be like the, the business's physical address. Some people like to use a different address for their tax filing purposes. So that's what this is for. If you don't want to use the same address as your physical address, uh, unselect this box and then enter the separate a separate filing address that you want your payroll tax forms mailed to and any correspondence related to it. You'll also have a few more questions below this to answer uh, regarding your employees and when you first hired your, your, your first employee. Also, whether or not your business is an existing business that you purchased from someone else or if it's new. And then what your principal uh, officer title is. The principal officer is primarily responsible for communicating with your bank about transactions and, and things of that nature. In addition to, um, they, they have the authority to, to perform um, actions on behalf of your company in regards to taxes and, and things. Click continue once you're done with this screen. And you'll see a box populate regarding new employer taxes. It's basically just telling you that QuickBooks pulls tax rates and um, deposit schedule information from the IRS and your tax, the tax agencies in your state. Um, so you don't have to do all the research. So for instance, we have Florida listed as this uh, mock business's physical address and it has an unemployment insurance rate of 2.7% for new employers. That's the average a rate that Florida tends to charge new employers. So QuickBooks has gathered that information for you and it will enter it um, as the default, giving you an opportunity to change it if you want. Click OK once you've read and you understand the screen. And then you'll see um, your federal and state tax details. So the first question asks you about your nonprofit status. Most businesses are not not, they're not nonprofit, so you'll just select no, unless you are a nonprofit, and then you'll need to know whether or not you have 501c3 status or not. Also, you'll need to know your employer identification number. Um, here, you will need to you will need to enter it, but QuickBooks does have an option for you to say you haven't received it yet, or you, you just don't have it handy. Um, I do recommend that you get that, you gather that, that you register for your employer identification number before you start this process, because you technically really won't be able to file taxes until you have it. Um, and it, it will be, it's important for, for your company being able to get credit for any payroll tax payments that it submits. So uh, there's also an option um, if you are interested in getting workers' compensation uh, offers, that Intuit, part, Intuit will give you those. Intuit partners with AP and Tego uh, that offers workers' compensation insurance. So feel free to select this if you're interested. If not, again, you can, you can unselect it, and uh, you can always call and talk to a rep if you're ever interested. And you'll also see questions that are specifically about your state. Now, this will differ from state to state. Here for Florida, there is no, on, there is no um, income tax. So you might, like some states, for instance, Georgia, will have withholding a withholding number um, because you will need to withhold income taxes from your employee paychecks. Florida doesn't have that, so you won't see that question here. Um, so I definitely urge you to just pay attention to the questions uh, that populate on the screen to make sure that you answer them accordingly. This is uh, this question is just regarding a Florida account number. It is what you would use for filing like unemployment tax, like the state unemployment taxes, because Florida does have that, and so you would want to have that ready when you when you enter this information. Click done once you are satisfied with this, uh, with the information you entered on the screen. And I'll click no because I don't have it for this mock company. Okay, so that's it. That's, that's all you have to do to enter your tax information. Um, the next thing though, you'll need to connect your bank. Let's do just a brief rundown of this. I'm not actually gonna connect a bank, but I just wanna take you through the steps so you kinda see what you're gonna have to do. So click let's go and get started. You'll see that there's an opportunity for you to review your business and principal officer information. Feel free to go in and review that, make any changes that's necessary. Um, what we're really interested in now is the bank account information. 
So click review and then add bank account. You'll see a list of, of banks here uh, that may or may not apply to you. If your bank is Wells Fargo, for instance, you don't you won't see it listed there um, and you'll need to enter it in the search box and it'll populate. And once your bank populates, you'll select it. Uh, by the way, before we before you continue, you'll need to make sure you have online banking uh, and you'll also need your username and your password because you're going to have to log into your banking account in order to fully connect it to the QuickBooks system. So it gives you an option um, basically to continue here. Uh, and so I want to show you that and see if I can do that. I thought I could do that on another screen, but I can't. Uh, well, we'll do that. So I click continue. And so this is what you would see if you were typically just going to Wells Fargo and logging in to see your bank, your online banking information. So you'll enter your username and your password. That's pretty much it. You'd sign on and then QuickBooks would, it would form a secure connection and that would be the end of it. If you do not have online banking, you do have the option to manually enter your information. This will take, this will take a few days. So the online banking connection is, can be done within minutes. This one you'll need to know your routing number, your account number, and then you'll click save. And it will take, uh, again, a few days, but it will, you will still be able to get it done. Um, ultimately, what's going to happen is QuickBooks is going to send a couple of small deposits to your bank account, probably one or two pennies, and you'll be asked to verify those once those actually, uh, once those actually show up as pending. And that will let QuickBooks know that you do indeed have access to that account that you're trying to use for payroll transactions. So once you do that, um, and we can't really go any further until we do this, but once you do that, uh, it will uh, successfully connect and you'll be done with, with this part of the process. And the last thing that you'll be doing is to sign your tax forms. Essentially, you'll once you will have an option to click "Let's Go" here once you finish connecting your bank, and it'll populate your name or the principal officer's name. Uh, and all you'll have to do is select a checkbox to basically give your approval for QuickBooks to perform uh, tax filing and payment on your behalf. And that's it.